Hi everyone, my name is Florence and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be chatting about what to expect on when some of your houseplants and what to do to keep them happy. Now, a lot of you might have only just started collecting plants, in which case you've had the amazing spring and summer growth, and now that winter's coming, the days are getting shorter and the heating's going on and all of these things, you might be terrified of losing your plants that you spent a lot of money on. Now, obviously it's really important to remember that all plants are replaceable. They obviously might have certain sentimental value, but if this is a hobby for you, you need to make sure that you're enjoying it and try not to stress too much. There's a lot of people in this community who go through exactly the same thing, and if you are ever stuck or worried about a plant, just reach out for help in that community. Now, I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but it might be good to expect that you might lose some of your house plants this winter. Winter is really not the same as summer, and some plants really struggle. So I'm going to be covering eight steps that you can take and things to look out for to try and make your house plants happy in this winter. Step one is pulling back on water and fertiliser. Now, you might not know, but plants do tend to go through a dormancy period during winter. This doesn't mean that they'll die back completely, except for some, which I'll list on the screen here. But it does mean that they won't be growing so much, they won't be focusing so much energy on growing roots or foliage, and therefore the nutrients aren't as needed. Plants tend to dry out a lot slower in winter, and it's very easy to overwater. So I'm telling you now, with your succulents and cacti, don't water them until they start to shrivel. Now, there is an easy way to test if your plant needs water. You just shove your finger in the soil, and if it comes out with soil stuck to it, then it's probably good and doesn't need water. But if your finger comes out completely dry, then it might be worth water, but just do check on the foliage and see whether it actually looks shriveled or is starting to drop or anything like that because the worst thing that you can do in winter is over water. Alternatively, you can just buy one of these and shove it in the soil. Now, I tend not to use these and it's really important not to leave them in a pot anyway. You need to keep them dry and you need to keep them in a cool, dark place, especially if they've got a light meter. Otherwise, they tend to become inefficient and don't work as well, so you might still be over watering your plants. Step two is light. Obviously, we all know that the days get shorter in winter, so that means that your plants will be getting less light anyway. What I do to combat this, and just because I'm quite a late riser, is I make sure that all of the blinds and curtains are open in any room that I'm not sleeping in. So that way, if I'm not up for sunrise, all of my plants get the maximum amount of light that they can during the day. Obviously, you can invest in grey lights, and there are some really great companies that go through all that you need. They can be quite pricey, which is why I tend to steer towards getting as much natural light as possible and steer away from artificial lights. Obviously, there are some aspects of my home that don't get any natural light and therefore I have to put artificial lights in. There's so much information out there on this that you can do some research and try and understand. The other thing that you can do to combat lack of light during the winter is you can move your plants around. You might have had some at the back of your room or in slightly shadier spots throughout the summer just so that they're not getting so much direct light from your windows but you can move these a lot closer now because the sun in the winter is a lot less harsh and obviously you get a lot of cloudy or rainy days so the sunlight isn't always direct. Step three is heating. Now, most of us have radiators or underfloor heating. If you've got underfloor heating, just make sure to prop up any plants that sat on the floor so that they're not getting direct heat into the pot. This will cause a lot of mould and root problems for your plant, and also just the heat in general probably you won't like if you put it on high setting. Now, for the majority of us who've got radiators, it's really important to keep them on and keep them high so the plants are still getting natural temperatures that they would be in the environment outside. But just move your plants away from the radiators. If it's ambient heat, that's fine, but if you've got them sat on top of radiator covers or on top of window sills, which a radiator sits underneath, move those away. The dry heat of radiators can kill plants really quickly, and there's a really easy way to combat this. You just move your plants away and because the humidity starts to drop, you can get a radiator 
things that hang on the radiator basically which hold water and therefore any time that your radiator's on it's not as dry. I wouldn't say that these are incredible for up in humidity but it does help it and they're still quite cheap so you just top them up with water and water evaporates into the air as soon as your radiator's come on. And number four is bugs. Obviously as plant parents, there are always bugs in our home, you might not have seen them, but there probably are. And if you haven't suffered from a bad infestation yet, I'm just letting you know that your time will come, and I hate to say that to you, but it's part of being a plant parent. Now, there's an easy way to combat major infestations, and that's using the systemic treatment. Obviously, as plants get more stressed, certain plants will get spider mites, or mealy bugs, or scale, or thrips, or anything. and Using a systemic treatment will really help reduce the impact that this has on the plants. Now, obviously, during summer, you've got your windows open a lot more, so thrips and other things like aphids are more likely to come into your home. But don't think because it's winter that you just won't get any more bugs, because that's simply not true. It's also really important if you're bringing plants in that have been outside in the summer to give them a full treatment, hose them down, wait for them to dry and then give them a spray of whatever you want to spray them with, whether that's dish soap, diluted in water, neem oil, a systemic insecticide, whatever you want. Just make sure that you quarantine that plant for at least two weeks so that you can see whether it's got any bugs and it won't spread to the rest of the collection. Now, I understand this might be really difficult for you to do if you've left them in space, but if that's the case, you can always put plants in little ziplock bags or put them in see-through bags, whatever, but just as long as that plant isn't touching or near any of your other plants, you should be fine. Number five is pots. Now, this might seem a bit of a weird one to have on, but if you haven't got any drainage holes in your pots, you need to make sure there are drainage holes in your pots. Obviously, you can have cover pots, which hold your pot will drainage, but if you've got plants, especially succulents, that are in pots without drainage, drill drainage holes now. You'll thank me for that because it's so easy for plants to get root rot during winter because of overwatering and without a drainage hole you won't be able to measure how much water is sat at the bottom of your pot. Whatever people tell you, using gravel at the bottom is the worst thing that you can do. Now what I'm about to tell you is in direct conflict with what I just said but try not to repot your plants until spring. It's so easy to find a new pot and think, oh my god, this plant would look perfect in it, but it needs to be repotted to it. Now, plants, as I said, go through a dormancy period, and therefore they don't grow massively, and their roots aren't focusing on growth, they're just focusing on surviving really through winter. It's very easy for a plant with much more soil in the pot to get waterlogged and cause root rot and therefore I'd really recommend just waiting until the spring, it's only a couple of months away. Number six is cold drafts. Obviously a lot of us live in older buildings or have gaps under our doors or you know don't have great fitting windows and it's really important to move your plants away from these drafts. They can cause a lot of shock and it might have been fine in summer when the air was a lot warmer, but now it's much, much harder for the plant to survive if it's got a cold draft. It would just cause shock and that plant might start dropping leaves or turning brown or getting spider mites or any other sort of stressed insect. And in the same way that it's really important to move plants away from radiators, it's just as important to move them away from cold drafts. Now, if you can get drafts excluders, I would actually do that. Obviously, it's going to make your home more energy efficient, but your plants will love them for it. Step number seven might seem really simple, but clean your plants. You've got blankets and jumpers out that haven't been out for ages, so they're quite dusty and there's a lot of fibres in the air. You've had your windows open in summer and a lot of dust comes in and a lot of dirt. And just generally, plants are magnets for dust. That thick layer of dust will stop your plants from photosynthesizing to their best ability. And in winter, they need all of the help they can get. All you need to do is just get a wet cloth and wipe the leaves down. This is also a really good time to check for pests or any problems that you haven't noticed throughout summer or autumn and deal with it now. It might be really time consuming, but if you do it once a month to once every six weeks, your plants will thank you for it. The last step, I'm 
just going to touch on very briefly the propagations. Now, obviously your plants aren't going to be growing massively during winter and neither will your propagations. Now, I'm not saying don't chop your plants to give away or, you know, to push out plants or anything like that. I'm just saying don't expect the growth that you had in summer from propagations to carry on throughout winter. It might be a lot more difficult to get roots from cuttings this time of year. There's a couple of easy ways to combat this struggle, I guess. And that's one is to get heat mats. There's some really good heat mats out there and make sure that you're getting seedling heat mats. This will ensure that the propagations won't burn but it is still important to maybe have a blanket or a tea towel or anything over the top of that just so the heat isn't going directly into the plant. The second one is domes and I know that Aaron is jumping up and down right now because he's been trying to get me to say this forever but domes will be your lifesaver during winter. It protects them and just makes a nice little home for them and you might find that your crops do a lot better in domes. The same as with your rooted plants that are sat in too much soil. Cuttings are prone to rot during winter and this is a really heartbreaking thing, especially if you're getting rare plants from online that are costing a lot of money and you found a really good specimen. The only thing that I would suggest to do is to wax the ends with an unscented candle. Obviously wait for the wax to melt and make sure that it's not too hot that it's going to damage your plant. But I just dip the ends of the stem in wax just so that it can't let any more moisture up into the stem of the plant. Now obviously don't wax the node because that's where your roots and new growth plants will come out of. But I hope this really helps and good luck on your propagations. I really hope you found this video useful and if you've got any more useful tips and tricks for people to try and get their plants through winter in the happiest, most stress-free way, please leave them in the comments below. This is such a great place to share information and make sure that you go down and check the comments out if you're still uncertain of anything. My inbox is always open on Instagram and if you're having any difficulty with any of your plants I'll do my best to help answer and try and fix your problem for you. But again, I'm just a hobbyist, I don't know everything in the world so if I can't help I try and find somebody who can. Remember that you are only human and plants are replaceable. Some plants will die and that's inevitable. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, so if you haven't already, please subscribe for more houseplant content. I'll see you next time.